Hi, I'm Frederic Rigolo, Belmont Media Center News Director and the host today of News Now, the Belmont Journal Daily News Program and Community Update. Last week in Atlanta, Georgia, another hate crime happened. On Sunday in Belmont, Belmont Against Racism, the Human Rights Commission, the Belmont American Chinese Association and the Pan-Asian Coalition held a vigil in the memory of the eight victims. Here, the highlights. Say my name, Sun Chung Park, Hyun Jung Grant, Sun Cha Kim, Yang Ai Yue, Xiao Jia Tan, Dao Yo Fen, Delania Ashley Yan, Paul Andre Michels. So many of you are here today. My name is Catherine Bonfilio. I'm the current president of Belmont Against Racism. And on behalf of Belmont Against Racism, the Belmont Religious Council, the Belmont Human Rights Commission, the Belmont Chinese American Association, and the Pan Asian uh, American Coalition here in Belmont, we welcome you to this event. Dear God, here we are again, far too soon and much too late. It was only weeks ago that many of us gathered in Cushing Square to grieve for Henry Tapia, another senseless act of violence, another death fueled by bigotry and hatred, right here in Belmont. And here we are again, standing together in the aftermath of an act of hate, once again feeling angry, grieving for eight precious and irreplaceable human beings, overflowing with sorrow again and far too soon. This was an act of domestic terrorism that instills fear in whole communities across the country. All of the human rights, human, Belmont Human Rights Commission members extend our support and appreciation for all community members of Asian descent who may be experiencing heightened fear and pain and perhaps even feel targeted themselves. We must all work to heal racial and ethnic divisions. The Commission is dedicated to fighting discrimination and hate in all its forms and is here in Belmont to support anyone who is experiencing discrimination or any form of injustice or if you wish just to share your ideas with us we welcome you to contact out us our groups work together to educate advocate and eliminate racism in all its forms we teach ourselves and others about the history of racism and its impact on our jobs our schools and our community we create supportive leaderships among educators of color and allies to, to confront inequities. We dismantle racism in all its forms to build a more just community. It is terrible what happened in Georgia, but we have seen here in Middlesex County over the last year and a half, over a 100% increase in acts based on hatred and based on bias. So what do we do with those? First of all, we have to name them. We have to call them what they are. There are many things that are not, as the sign says, a bad day. They're not just something that happens. They are hate crimes. And we have to, just as we come together to speak these names, we have to tell people about them. And that is a hard thing to do. Very often people fear 
that by telling the Human Rights Commission, telling the police department, telling the district attorney's office, they will subject themselves to more harassment, more criminal behavior. We cannot address it if we cannot see it. That's why just in the last week, we've made available to the Human Rights Commission and to across the county forms to track what happens. Do not keep things that happen a secret. That's why I've partnered with the Attorney General and have sponsored a bill this session to make our hate crime statute here in Massachusetts better and more inclusive. It should not be, as it is right now the case, that if I damage your property in a hate crime, if I come to your house and I write something terrible on the front door of your house, and you do not own that house, that is not your property, we cannot prosecute you for a hate crime. The law has to change. As we've heard already, this is the third vigil in less than a year that I've attended here in Belmont. While very unfortunate, these vigils are necessary so that we as a community can let our residents know and let people from outside Belmont know that we do not and will not tolerate hate in our community. I would like to let everyone here today know that I am personally available to you if you believe you are being treated unfairly or you feel threatened. Or maybe you just have questions or you want to help make us a better police department. You can always reach out to me. I will get back to you. I'll make time to speak to anybody who has any questions, any concerns about the way we prosecute cases, the way we go about our business here in this community. This is your police department. It's your community. Let's stop the hate here in Belmont. We in B BCAA believe that only response to those shocking acts of hatred and the violence is to draw closer together as neighbors and the community. Let us all raise the fist to show our solidarity with the victim, their families, and loved ones, and all those who face discrimination, harassment, and violence in our country today. I am I'm with you in wanting to do everything I can, and let me know anytime I can, stand up against hate, I want our Asian residents to know that we are here for you. Our town's created a new diversity task force to start addressing issues of inequality and discrimination facing our residents, and I assure you we will not stop there. We will take the acts necessary to keep Belmont diverse, safe, and a place of opportunity. So I tell our Asian community, you are welcome, you are loved, and you are us. Anti-Asian sentiment is nothing new. It has existed for centuries. For far too long, anti-Asian racism has prevailed and manifested into forms of violence, verbal assaults, fetishization, mockery, and more. As represented in media, propaganda, and systemic outlines, Asians are perceived in a contradictory position. At one end, we are viewed as threats. A recent example being the rise in anti-Asian racism in the plight of the COVID-19 pandemic. On the other end, we are displayed as accommodating and well-off individuals, the linings of the model minority myth, which has not only enforced damaging stereotypes within the Asian community itself, but also pits other minority groups against one another. Georgia County Sheriff said that the shooter had just had a really bad day. As if the slaughter of eight innocent people because someone viewed Asian women as sexual objects was justified by one person's bad day. And it hurts because I can't help but see my own families in these victims. I feel devastated knowing that several people lost their mothers this Tuesday. Now from 2020 into 2021, the entire Asian community has been blamed for the COVID-19 pandemic. We may be portrayed as submissive and quiet, but just know we are tired of suffering in silence. Today, we stand here to contribute to dismantling racism. As we move forward, I encourage you all to go home and do some research. Look up a charity to donate to and educate yourself on what's been happening to the AAPI community. 
but most importantly, take time to reflect on yourself and the unconscious biases that you hold. Have the courage to admit that you have those biases and then focus on learning to approach every person you meet with both compassion and respect. We've had a hard year and um, I wanna say, uh, how would we have gotten through it without the Belmont Chinese American Association right here in Belmont? The meals, the masks, and countless other things. Acts of hatred betray our most cherished and sacred values. Whenever we label someone as other or somehow blame an entire group for problems that they never created, it diminishes us all. The Belmont Pan-Asian Coalition is a diverse group of Americans, both American-born and immigrant, with origins all over Asia. We are united in part by a belief in our diversity, our wish to educate others about that diversity, and our pride in our uniqueness as individual human beings. It was my initial hope, since four of the women who were killed Tuesday were Korean in origin, that one or more of the Korean Americans in our group would speak today. Unfortunately, they were not able to and I am faced with what to me is the daunting task of representing them and the rest of the Asian groups in Belmont while eulogizing people I never knew who came from countries I have never been to. This was a crime against Asians, a crime that stemmed from a failure to look at an Asian woman and see her not as a category, but as a unique and as valuable an individual as your own daughter sister or mother. And so maybe it is okay that I'm speaking on behalf of the slain women today because as one of several disparate founding members of the Belmont Pan-Asian Coalition, I appreciate and celebrate these women and feel affinity with them not because they share the same country of origin or are so much the same as me, but because they are different, wonderfully uniquely different, both from me and from each other.